Okay, I am now set up to walk you through these two processes. The first one I want to show you is how to make this hanging device. This is kind of ugly. Uh, this plastic had a, uh, uh, I cut the plastic away and just taped it down so this device could be glued to the back of the mat. Let's just walk through that process. <clears throat> First of all, you're going to need some scrap pieces of mat board. So this process is free. Well, the only thing it's going to cost you is a bottle of glue. This is what we're going for. This piece of mat board that has been scored so it will bend and a triangle cut in the part that is not glued down. So uh, the, most of you could probably take this and run with it at this point. Uh, the only thing you need to know is this has to be glued down in exactly the center of the back side of the mat. I mean exactly. If it's just a little off one way or the other the mat will hang crooked on the wall. You want it relatively high on the mat. It's just easier to find the nail in the wall when you're trying to hook that nail into that spot. So, <clears throat> for those of you that who haven't quite followed what I'm talking about, let's just walk you through it. I have a piece of mat board, and uh, I have actually scored it already. Let me just put this one aside. We'll start with a scrap piece of mat board. This one is uh, an inch and three quarter. That's a, not a particularly good size uh, just for my demonstration. But So I'm going to flip back to another one. But for right now, all I'm going to do is lay that ruler across. This is a metal ruler. And notice that I'm cutting on a piece of masonite, or you can use the mat cutting surfaces, the cutting surfaces in... Uh, the two rooms at the end of the, ends of the hallway upstairs. Never use an exacto knife on a tabletop or a desktop. Uh, you see plenty of evidence. Now I scored that. I did not cut all the way through. In fact, I just want to cut it lightly so it's going to bend. And now I can glue this part down and this is where my hanging is going to take place. So this one uh, is the same thing, but I turned it because it just happens to be two inches wide and for the purpose of this demonstration <coughs> it's easier to use an even number so I'm going to mark the exact center of this that's the exact center one inch in I'm going to draw a triangle doesn't matter the size of it you need enough distance here that it doesn't tear loose. But a mat board does not have a matted piece of artwork of just foam core. It doesn't have much weight. So um, this distance doesn't have to be all that great. Uh, it just needs to hold the weight. I would not recommend using this device for a framed piece of artwork. Uh, the frame is going to weigh too much. So now I'm simply going to cut my triangle being very careful not to cut towards my fingers. And it's going to take a number of passes. I don't want to tear that out. It needs to need to show some craftsmanship here. It didn't cut all the way through. As you can see, the lines are not showing up or the cut isn't all the way through. So I'm just going to repeat that process and cut out that little triangle corners are the hardest ones to make sure you get cleared. There we go, it's coming loose. So, now we have this little piece of mat board and we're ready to glue it down. So move my cutting masonite out of the way. And I have here a nice drawing that was just turned in. Oh, who was this? Let me check this out. Ethan Kyle. Ethan, I hope I didn't mispronounce your last name. So, 
Nice piece of artwork. He's uh, matted it with a solid black core black mat. And uh, he's done a pretty decent job of lining the front up with the back so there's no, uh, can't see the that white mat on the back of it. And he's used the package tape that you moisten to hinge the top to the back. And he's used linen tape uh, to hinge the drawing to the backing. This allows uh, the artwork to float. And so the only thing he might need to do once he puts the hanger on the back of this, he might want to use a little piece of masking tape wrapped in a circle here, and another one down in the other corner, uh, and that will allow that to stick so this front doesn't flap away when it's hanging on the wall. That's the only place you would use any masking tape on a mat on a matted piece. <coughs> so I'm going to turn this over and I did not check this one out uh, initially. So this is 20 inches. It says 16 by 20. And so what we're going to do is mark 10 inches. It is very important that that little mark be exactly in the center from side to side. If it's off a quarter of an inch, it's not going to hang straight or level on the wall. So now I've got a location for this. Actually, I'm going to use this smaller one. And uh, I'm going to put glue on it and line it up. <coughs> now, this is just tacky glue. You can use Elmer's glue. You'll just need to let it sit here with a little weight on it a little bit longer. If you use Elmer's glue, it doesn't have as quick a tack quality. It won't hold tight as quickly. So, by the way, a little eye screw like that does really well to screw it into the top of, into the top of your glue once you've cut your tip off to seal that. So, I want a little bit of glue, tacky glue on the back of this. And spread it out. And so I've got my glue on there. I simply line it up so the top of that triangle is exactly even or lined up with my knot or my mark, I mean. And <clears throat> there we have it. That tacky glue will hold that. You really don't need to weight it if you're using the tacky glue. And I would probably, before I hung that on the wall, I would probably wait at least an hour, yeah, maybe even longer. Um, I'm not sure what it says the drying time is, but you really don't want your mat dropping to the floor. Uh, the foam core, when it hits the floor, if it hits it on the corner of the foam core, it's going to have a bent corner. So, that is ready once the glue dries to hang on the wall. Works really well. So, those of you who are going to use that inexpensive method don't need to watch anymore. But I want to demonstrate another way to do it that I actually like a little bit better, but it's a little more time consuming. <clears throat> and this is. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, this is on the back of a mounted photograph. doesn't matter if it's a matted artwork or photograph. By the way, if you have a really large piece of artwork, you might want two of these. Uh, one on each side a ways in from the center to help keep it uh, level on the wall. It's a little harder to line it up. Uh, when you put the nails on the wall, you just have to make sure that they're exactly that far apart. So what is this? Well, this is some kind of cloth. Paper would do, but paper's going to tear. This is a little package of twill tape. And I'm not sure what this is, but I bought it in the fabric store. It's a binding material, I think, for hemming garments. And it's a little wider. I like this one a little bit better. But it was this twill tape that I used 
for this one, but any piece of cloth, just an old t-shirt, uh, anything cut into little strips will work. And so you mark it uh, just like you do, mark it the exact center. But let me just share with you what I've done here. I've created kind of a mass production process. Here's all my equipment for making these. <clears throat> I buy these little plastic rings. Uh, at one point I bought some little metal rings. Uh, they worked fine. I like the plastic ones. Uh, they're a little bit larger. And so, and those, by the way, are over in the craft section of Walmart. They actually come in several sizes. Here's little plastic rings, and here's larger plastic rings. Either one will do. So, I have this one drying right now. So, it's about dry. I'm going to go ahead and take this off so you can see it in reverse process. Use these little clips to hold a couple pieces of mat board. And under the mat board is a little piece of wax paper. And put that out of the way. And yeah, I've got to cut a loose end off of that. And I had a little black stain in my tacky glue, the nozzle of it. But that is ready to glue down just like I did the mat. So you glue this down with tacky glue, having the center of your mat exactly inside of the, the approximate center of this. But the nice thing about this is the, the curved surface, it's always going to roll to the center of it. So here's one that isn't glued together yet, just so you can follow what I did. I have little pieces of wax paper and a couple of cardboard or mat board pieces, any, anything to hold it flat. And this is the right, just about the right length. I just wrap it around <clears throat> and go ahead and squirt some glue or tacky glue. Again, Elmer's glue would work. into that and then I'm going to wrap that with wax paper just a little bit of wax paper around my cloth a little piece of mat board a little piece of mat board <clears throat> clip them together and let it dry so if I've got five or six or seven of these to mat all at once, then I'll just go ahead and make all of these. Got a container full of all the material I need so I can mass produce those. And then it's just a simple matter of marking the center of your mat and gluing that cloth down to the mat. And there you have it, uh, ready to hang on the wall. Well. A free way and a very inexpensive way to make hangers for the back of your matted pieces. Just a word of caution, craftsmanship is always important. It just looks better if the craftsmanship is there. I don't know that I would use these uh, in a commercial gallery. If they were extremely well crafted, I would have no qualms about it, but typically you're going to sell um, frame pieces out of a commercial gallery, although it is not uncommon to purchase photographs that are mounted onto a foam core, and that gives you a really easy way to display them. So that's how you do it.